Hi everybody, today is August 19th, 2012. I'm glad to see that someone's doing a follow-up. I did um, several articles about these power plants getting special license for going environmental water and air conditions and also for going how these plants were designed. Power plants releasing hotter water. State issues exemption. Environmentalists worry about fish. They're doing this across the nation. Globally, in fact. And this is an image of the Braidwood Nuclear Facility in Will County, courtesy of Chuck Berman, Chicago Tribune. I don't know if he's following my blogs. Seems kind of coincidence that they're doing this after I did several reports. If you are, thank you. Articles by Aaron Meyer and Julie Wernu. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. As fish die in record numbers across Illinois this summer because of the intense heat and drought, state officials are granting power plant special exemptions to flush massive amounts of hot water into already stressed lakes and rivers. The Illinois Environmental Protection Agency is allowing power plants to dump hundreds of millions of gallons of water per day at temperatures approaching 100 degrees into the state's waterway, the Tribune has learned. Temperature sensitive fish already been swimming deeper to find cooler water or have been abandoning environmentally inhospitable areas during the heat and drought. But with power plants operators dumping hot water at record amounts, environments say fish along with the river and lakes they live in could face increased risk. I have an aquarium and I know for a fact that the carp that I have in my aquarium would die if the temperatures reach anywhere near that. The carp I'm talking are my goldfish. Regulators and power plant operators say the waivers to release water hotter than the normal are necessary so they can continue providing adequate power in August, following the warmest July in U.S. history when energy demand for air conditioners was soaring. Do you want people to start dying or do you want to save some fish? Said Julia Wazaka of Midwest Generation, whose job is to make sure the plants remain in compliance with thermal emissions limitations. Now what they're doing is they're raising the amount that the original limitations were set for. I did several blogs on this. In issuing the variants of four coal fire plants and four nuclear plants, the IEPA has largely relied on power plant and grid operators to say whether shutting down an individual facility would lead to widespread power outage. Plant operators struggling because of stubbornly low electricity prices have a financial incentive to keep plants running rather than power down. Analysis say that for every day that a power plant shuts down, its owner loses hundreds of thousands of dollars. And Midwest Generation, which operates six coal fire plants in Illinois, is struggling and may be forced to seek bankruptcy protection along with its parent company, executives said this month. The plant operators insist that they must continue to produce electricity to meet the demand, including what is needed to protect the sick and elderly during torrent conditions. Henry Henderson, director of the Natural Resource Defense Council Midwest office in Chicago, said state officials are making a mistake by granting variance to power companies to exceed hot water thresholds. Indeed, power plants should power down, he said. Illinois export energy. We have energy security, he said. The powering down is not a threat to energy security. The state waterways has not shown any signs of damage as a result of the variance issued to power producers according to IEPA, right, the ones that issued these emergency waivers. But the hot water release have drawn fire from environmental groups that say Illinois is allowing thermal pollution from power companies when the state should be focusing on the future of energy production in a warming climate. The IEPA issued permits to the state's nuclear and coal power plant, allowing them to draw what the industry calls cool water from rivers and lakes, both coal fire and nuclear plants use the water in the process to create electricity and to cool their equipment before returning it to the waterways. At nuclear plants, this water does not come in contact with any radioactive element. Both types of plants must first allow the water to cool so it won't wreak havoc on the fish and the habitat in rivers and lakes. Under state law, the maximum threshold during normal operations is 90 degrees, but with a waiver in some instances, that level limit has been increased to temperatures reaching 97 degrees. And that's baloney because there's been waivers for 102 degrees. In recent months, as energy demand has increased, the power companies have not been able to adequately cool down the water because of record hot weather is heating the river 
and their cooling ponds. So the IEPA is allowing them to discharge more water over the threshold limit than at any other time in the past, the Tribune found. This year, the state issued a record 29 provision variants or variance extensions, said Roger Calloway of the IEPA. I showed you guys a list yesterday of these emergency pardons or what do you want to call it. There was like 1,000, almost 1,800 of them. We only have 110 to 120 nuclear power plants here in the United States. I don't know how many coal plants there are, but that would mean on average, you fear if there's like 240 of these plants altogether, coal and nuclear in the United States, that would be like seven emergency get out of jail free cards for each plant. Now they weren't all for the water, they were for other things too, but it just gives you an idea of how many get out of free cards they are issuing the IPA and the NRC to these companies. So just in Illinois this year alone they've issued 29 provisional variances or variance extensions. I don't know how many coal plants they have. I know they got five nuclear plants there in the state. The article goes on to say if we got grid alerts out we're going to issue the variance, said Callaway. This particular year we have not denied a single one. Grid alert are warnings issued by agency responsible for grid stability during times of peak demand. Callaway added that he has never seen a more uncertain time for the power supply in 40 years working in the environmental compliance. He said that when Chicago endured the three consecutive days of 100 degree weather in early July, a faltering power supply almost resulted in a brownout, a drop in voltage or an outage lasting minutes or hours according to anecdotal information he said he received from a power plant operator. Officials could not confirm the operator's assurance of brownout threats. A spokesman for ComEd said the utility does not track such threats. So they can't confirm this if they were on the verge of a brownout or not. I'll give you a link if you want to read more. There's another page of this information. Greed, that's all it boils down to is greed. All right, bookmark my site. I'll keep everyone up to date. Please stay safe and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.